Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Dr. Reeves, ready to embark upon an epic adventure of figuring out things that will fake us out and make us think that the patient has multiple sclerosis when in fact they don't. On we go. There are four or five or so groups of diseases that we can kind of put together in the same bucket, if you will. Uh, the, of things that will look like MS, uh, smell like MS, act like MS, and confuse us. So why don't we get right on to discussing that. Let's start out with a dab. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Dr. Reeves here. I had to do that just to really irritate my daughter. <laughs> it's okay. So we're talking today about multiple sclerosis are, are really things that make you think that the person has multiple sclerosis. There are uh, mimics, uh, disorders, diseases that make us think the patient might have MS. And in my career, I have uh, undiagnosed, if that's a word, a fair number of folks who came with a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, some of them having been treated for years for MS, and they didn't have it. Fortunately, that's a, a small percentage, but it's not a zero percentage. So let's just get started on the list, if you will. So far and away, the most common misdiagnosis of multiple sclerosis in my experience has been a person who has some kind of neurologic problem and they have white spots in the brain that are simply the consequence of aging or uh, uh, environmental factors like cholesterol and smoking and diabetes and such. So as we get older and as we have other diseases or just generally our health is affected, we tend to pick up more of these white spots in the brain. And they go by several names. Uh, uh, the uh, radiologists will often put something in the MRI report about uh, there are areas of increased T2 flare signal in the cerebral hemispheric white matter and then they go on to say cannot rule out MS or consider demyelinating disease. The problem comes when someone who has these white spots has some other neurologic thing. They might have carpal tunnel or they might have a pinched nerve in the neck, or they might have some other problem that's affecting their balance or their, their bladder function or something neurologic where people say, oh, there are white spots in the brain and oh, they have these neurologic problems and MS does that, so uh, they probably have MS. Um, so clearly, not all people who have white spots in the brain have MS. Some people, the white spots are kind of like wrinkles, I, I refer to them. Uh, as we get older, we pick up some white spots in the brain, just like we kind of lose our hair or kind of get wrinkles. In this. And, and we're all a little bit different in when we start getting gray hair and wrinkles. Some people might be in their 40s, other people in their 50s or 60s. And the same is true of the white spots. If you look carefully, there's usually a difference in how the white spots look between MS and uh, aging. Uh, but sometimes there's a gray zone in between. So, second disease that can occur that causes white spots in the brain is uh, blood vessel diseases. And I, I'm kind of putting that into a big bucket because there are actually a, a number of underlying disorders that will cause problems with the blood vessels in the brain. They could be small arteries or arterioles, could be small veins, but people who have problems with these blood vessels uh, have white, can develop white spots, and they can develop uh, neurologic changes, and sometimes the neurologic changes and the white spots reflect small, multiple little strokes that don't really look like regular strokes, um, or sometimes the white spots represent uh, not really a stroke change, but Still, it's an effect of uh, something damaging the blood vessels. So about that bucket of disorders or diseases that affect the blood vessels, 
people often talk about uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE, or lupus for short. Lupus and uh, a number of other uh, vasculitis types of disorders where the blood vessels get inflamed or they're affected with the disease can cause a MS-like appearance and even sometimes an MS-like history with the patient. Uh, rare disorder that can do that, that's an immune disorder, is Hashimoto encephalopathy, where a person has uh, kind of a sl usually a slowly evolving change in their thinking and behavior, and they have some white spots in the brain. The syndrome clinically is usually uh, relatively easy to distinguish from multiple sclerosis, but the MRI scans can in some ways look very similar. Uh, another immune disorder, and this is, sort of sits in the boundary between a blood vessel thing and a, a pure immune thing, is, is uh, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. So the little blood vessels are being affected by uh, some antibodies against the phospholipids. And people with this kind of disorder have an increased number of strokes, like regular stroke strokes, but they also have an increased number of white spots that sort of look like the MS white spots. And because they will sometimes have neurologic problems with them, it's easy to add two plus two and come up with four and say, ah, uh, this is multiple sclerosis. A really quite rare disorder, which uh, I've seen maybe four or five times in my entire career, uh, and every time I've seen it, it has been mistaken for multiple sclerosis, is called Susak syndrome. And it's a poorly understood disorder that causes uh, damage to blood vessels in the brain and in the eye, in the retina of the eye, and in the, the kind of inner ear, particularly the hearing part of the inner ear. So occasionally I will see somebody who has been diagnosed with MS and they have uh, had hearing loss, abrupt hearing loss on one side. And sometimes if you have the ophthalmologist do a, a retinal angiogram, you'll see that there are branch retinal artery occlusions, and that's the diagnosis of Susak syndrome. Again, rare, but something to think about. Um, the inherited coagulopathies disorders that are inherited because people have a gene defect in one of the uh, proteins that helps manage their blood clotting uh, can have uh, a, an MRI scan that looks sort of like MS. And the, the disorders do not necessarily have to have caused big or large strokes. Sometimes they just cause small little blood vessels to have problems. Typically, these are not uh, coagulopathies or bleeding disorders that, that cause excess bleeding. In fact, they tend to be ones that cause excess clotting. You're probably getting the picture by now that a lot of things which mimic multiple sclerosis, at least on the MRI scan, uh, tend to be things that affect blood vessels and often the, the small blood vessels, and, and that's true. That's not the whole, that's not all there is, but that's a chunk of the disorders. So it's always good to think about that. Now, when we come to the, the neurologic problems that are associated with some of these blood vessel disorders, a person comes in and they have an MRI scan that kind of looks like MS, and they have neurologic problems, they have a weak arm or a numb leg or whatever it is. Uh, one of the things that usually helps me distinguish that is that the symptoms, at least for some of the attacks, came on very quickly, like multiple sclerosis is an inflammatory disorder with, that's, that's driven by the immune system. So I'm always expecting to hear that something built up over hours to a day or two or four or six or what have you, it kind of in the time course that we would expect any sort of disorder that is inflammatory, the inflammation to, to start and build, because inflammation doesn't just hit you. Uh, one day I saw a fellow who had been treated for several years by someone else, 
uh, for MS and, and I, I just needed to refill his medicine. He was new to me and I asked him how his MS came on and he talked about how uh, his first attack occurred when he was, he was walking into the kitchen to go to the refrigerator for something to drink. And he was fine when he was walked, got up to walk to the, to the refrigerator. And by the time he got to the refrigerator, he was crawling. And he had had a, a, a problem, he had some, some kind of attack in his spinal cord. Well, MS doesn't hit you that fast. And it turns out he had an inherited uh, genetic uh, coagulation problem. So let's move off of the coagulation and the blood vessel things, and let's look at some of the, the uh, infections that can happen. Uh, clearly, Lyme disease is one of the infections that can give you a syndrome clinically and an MRI scan that looks like multiple sclerosis. And so, particularly where I practice, which is in the northern United States, um, Lyme disease is not very uh, rare at all, and so we always have to think of that. Other infections um, include, and this is not as common now, but syphilis. Uh, was clearly much more common you know, 80, 90, 100 years ago. And uh, that can cause various white spots. It can cause changes in thinking and balance. It can affect the spinal cord. So we still occasionally check for that. Um, in reality, I think I've seen one neurosyphilis case in my entire career at this point. M maybe I'm just sheltered. Um, other disorders that, that uh, well, a rare one that can affect the spinal cord in particular is uh, HTLV-1 infection. Uh, it's a human T-cell lymphotrophic virus type 1. And that causes a, uh, a problem, particularly with the spinal cord, and people get spastic. Um, it doesn't usually do a whole lot in the brain, and so it's uncommon that that would be mistaken. But one of its relatives, one of the uh, viruses that's a relative to HDLV1 is the HIV virus. And that can cause a lot of different neurologic problems, including a picture that sometimes uh, looks similar to multiple sclerosis. So it's not uncommon that we would check that serology when someone shows up with uh, a syndrome that we think could be MS. Um, it rarely, uh, there's a Toxocara canis and Toxocara cata. These are uh, uh, parasites that are associated with uh, dogs and cats. That uh, It's a little worm type thing that can affect the humans and it can in some cases get into the brain and it sort of can look like MS spots. Um, doesn't really look a ton like that, but it could be mistaken for that. Uh, another infection that causes things that, again, you know, not super typical of MS spots, but maybe in some cases is uh, the JC virus, uh, which causes a disorder called PML, or progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. And that's really a disorder we typically see in people who are immunocompromised, immunosuppressed. Folks will, will sometimes, uh, you, you'll often read or hear that vitamin B12 deficiency can mimic MS. It doesn't really mimic MS. It can affect the spinal cord, no question. It can cause nerve damage to the arms and legs, uh, no question. It can cause uh, memory loss, yes. But it doesn't really uh, give you the attacks uh, that are so common. Most people have relapsing remitting MS, uh, at least uh, early on. And you don't really get this history of uh, I was fine until August, and then by September I had a, a, a terrible problem. And, and the problems that you get with B12 deficiency typically are not localized. It's not that B12 deficiency will affect the left arm but not the right or something like that. As you uh, read around on the internet and other places, myasthenia gravis is sometimes included in the list of things that might mimic multiple sclerosis. Myasthenia gravis doesn't really doesn't cause changes in the brain. It causes fluctuating weakness, often of, of, of eyes, so that people get double vision. Uh, and it causes weakness of the, the mouth muscles, the arms and leg muscles and such. 
the weakness tends to fluctuate, gets better when people rest often. But uh, it should be a little hard to mistake myasthenia for multiple sclerosis. Now, there are some other diseases that I have left off of the list so far, which are not MS, but they are in the same family. And so I don't really want to say that they're mimicking multiple sclerosis, but as you read around, you'll see that uh, disorders like neuromyelitis optica, uh, also known as Devic syndrome, is uh, quote, mistaken for MS. Uh, ADEM, or acute disseminated cephalomyelitis, uh, it can be mistaken for MS, uh, for example. These disorders are in the bucket of immune-mediated demyelinating disorders. And all of them, you know, 40, 60, 80 years ago, would have been typically um, diagnosed as MS. And so what we've really done is, is, is subdivided that bucket into some smaller buckets, if you will. So uh, the, the reason I kind of still throw them in with MS is because essentially the treatment's about the same. Um, and it's an interesting, uh, different kind of immune-mediated neurologic disorder, I agree, but it's fundamentally much more like MS than it is like anything else. So I'm not going to talk a whole lot about those. Okay. Sarcoidosis is another immune-related uh, disorder that can cause uh, changes in the brain and spinal cord that look very much like multiple sclerosis. And so that's something we need to keep our, our eyes open for, particularly in that sort of 20 to 40, 45, 50 year old range, but, but later as well in life it can happen. Obviously the, the further in life you get, the less likely you are to have MS. So somebody in their 20s or 30s or 40s, uh, it may be able to cross our mind and we'll, we'll look for uh, lymph node problems here and there in the, in the body and some other chemical changes in the blood. Um, so I hope this has been of some benefit I can't have an exhaustive list because it'll continue to be added to every year. But uh, this is more um, things to keep in mind when a typical case or a, a slightly unusual case with multiple sclerosis comes in. It's good for us to think, what else could this be? How am I getting fooled? So thanks for your time. Have a good day. We're recruiting, by the way. Oh. <laughs> With a long head like this, we cannot fail. There's a hair hanging off of this. <laughs>